Please leave your message for AFK with Ninja. Ninja! Ninja Ninja! Or Ninja Ninja Ninja! It's time for another solo dolo yolo bolo trollo. And then I say solo episode of AFK with Ninja. Today, I am laying it all out there of how the mixer deal went down and how I navigated through the ups and downs. How much money did I make? What did I think when it failed? Did I want to quit? We're getting into all of it. Stick around. Um, I'm just gonna just literally jump straight into it. You can, yeah, yeah. If you don't want to answer it, but no, I, I got think... it, dude. I got it. Fucking send it, send it, dude. Mixer deal. How did you first hear about Mixer? I always knew Mixer ex- existed. It was always just again. It was always like nothing could ever compete with Twitch. You want you look at the product and what like the deliverables and what are, what a company and a website has to offer for a live streaming platform side of things. It was one of the things where dude, it's just so big and there's no reason to go anywhere else. I always did Mixer, but it was always just, again, it was such a small platform. It was like, oh yeah, this is Microsoft's like little baby. Like, cool. They wanted to have it. Again, I never really did any crazy deep dive into Mixer prior to when we were like, okay, well, in case Twitch doesn't come with something that, you know, complements what we think we're worth, let's do some research and like, let's look around. So immediately my team was like, well, of course we can, oh, there's always Mixer, there's Microsoft's company. And after that, I started watching a bunch of streams, interacting in the chat. Like taking a look at the product, looking at like the top viewership amongst streamers, like what numbers were people pulling, and of course, nothing could hold the candle to Twitch on the on the size aspect, right? They really just had the entire community and the genre in a deadlock. But I, I did love it, man. I loved I loved the embers and the sparks. Like it was a it was a brilliant idea. Like the chat interaction was you know, Twitch couldn't even compete or even come close, or, or it it does now, I think. But even then, like the, the chat interaction. And the interaction of the interface with Mixer was was on unca- un- un- just it was just too good. It was too good. Like you could, you know, I still have this uh, still have this viewer that I had when I made the deal. Her name was um it was Cheryl or Blizzard eight one eight I think is what it was. But Blizzard I know is a name for sure. And we always she would always throw a thousand embers at me, which is like ten dollars, and it would be a shark. She would do like little, we call it Cheryl the shark, and the shark would just eat embers and like it would pop up through the stream and just eat these little diamonds. And it would go through the video and go through the chat and it would pop up in the chat as well. Kind of like a super chat on YouTube and what it is now on Twitch too. But dude, it was just awesome. I loved it. It was so interactive. It was so fun. It was one of the only, it was literally one of the reasons I kept streaming so much was because I was like, dude, like I'm still having so much fun, like interacting with the chat. And it, unfortunately they didn't, they had a lot of negatives too that. The good old email sign up, eh? Yes, dude. I've talked about this a lot. Yeah. But like, it's always good to have it on. It's always good to have it on the podcast. Uh, so it'll be it'll be out for it'll be up and out there forever and have everything in one space. But one of the biggest L's that ultimately, I mean, dude, I don't want to say this led to Mixer's downfall, but I will say that there are the, that there are things that if they were implemented in place and we took our time and didn't like rush the announcement, and if Mixer actually could have acted on these things quickly without getting approval from like a hundred other people up at the Microsoft side of things, it would have been much better. It would have been much quicker. But unfortunately, it's the same reason that it takes a billion years for something to change at YouTube on YouTube's streaming platform because everything has to go through Google and it has to be approved, you know, to millions and millions and tens of millions of other people that also stream. So it's not as, it's just not as simple as it it should be or, or as it could be. And if you guys knew, I mean, when I was streaming on Mixer, I think I was pulling like, I was, my first stream ever was 360,000 viewers. It was crazy, like massive. I think that day alone, they had over like five to 10 million like concurrent people or unique people like come onto the website. And the retain, dude, I like, I guarantee you they retained maybe 5% of those. Like, I guarantee you 5% of those people didn't even like, were the only ones that made an account because you needed a Hotmail account. Like needed. Dude, I it was, watched you and just didn't make an account because it was too yeah, difficult. It was hard, bro. And like, do you <laughs> like I guess talk, I'm not watching you again. <laughs> yeah, man. You want to talk about the? You want to talk about like removing as many barriers to get people into something, right? Like, if I have a gambling website or if I have just any website, like it's dude, it's gonna be create an account. It's gonna be any email, 
put in the password. Don't care what it, what it, what it is. Uh, like I hate when people are like, I hate PlayStation network. I hate cause you can't have, you can't have multiple numbers. Like it, it, you can't have more than like one or nine. Like if it's like one, nine, three, it's three numbers in a row. Can't have it. I hate that. It's like, let, let me make my password whatever I want it to be. If I want it to be nine, eight, six, five, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, four, five, question mark, question mark, question mark, asterisk, right? Like, like that's what it should be. But it's like, only have one symbol, can't have this many numbers, things like that. It's terrible. Because some people, it's just, it, that alone will turn off some people from making an account. But dude, you needed this Hotmail account. And even if you had a Hotmail account, I had every single one of my family members, including my wife, need to reach out to Mixer support to like verify their email so that they actually got the email like verification to make the username. It was abysmal. It was a nightmare. And we told them for months. And I was like, guys, I understand your Microsoft. I understand your, you know, your Hotmail, your Outlook, right? Like, but please just let people make whatever they want. And they're like, no, it's just like it's so ingrained in the in what the the website is and what they're like they're trying to do that they wouldn't allow like Gmail or any other fucking email. And that dude, that was just one of their first biggest, just ginormous L's. I mean, that was the most, in my opinion, one of the worst things that uh, that they just never changed. Because God knows how many people just never came back and never made an account. And if my if my entire family needs help and assistance by like sending an email and like reaching out to like you know Mixer employees to to like log into their account and have access to their account and create it, like dude, one in a hundred people are going to go out of their way to do that. Like it's so it's just not. It was just a huge, huge, massive L. It was reported by Forbes. Mm. When Ninja signed with Mixer, Forbes said the multi-year contract there was worth between twenty and thirty million dollars at twenty-nine years old. <laughs> Can you confirm or deny those allegations? I won't say how much exactly, but you know, I, I was I, I was so curious where they got that number from, and that just goes also that just also goes it goes without saying like you can just never trust anyone, dude. Like even the. Even the the XQC deal, like the hundred million dollar deal, dude, it wasn't like a hundred million cash. Like I would bet a large amount of money, and there's nothing wrong with this, by the way. Not throwing shade at my boy. I love my boy Felix. Wish nothing but the best for him and, and every streamer. But like, guarantee that money was either like some sort of something involved with gambling money, stake money, stake percentage, like stake. Like it wasn't just all cash, and they made it seem like it was in the announcement. Like it's very misleading, right? Yeah, it's the same thing with uh, it's the same thing with the Mixer Forbes announcement. I, I don't know who leaked that to them. We were actually really pissed when the article came out because A, it was wrong, um, and B, we didn't want. Yeah, like it. If you're gonna do it, it's gonna, at least get yeah, it right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean, dude? Like, it, come on, it was offensive. <laughs> <laughs> you're off by thirty. Come on, Forbes. Right, come on, dude. Like, what are you guys? What are you guys doing? Can you say if it was all straight cash or if it was equity or do you know? Do you know what no, I'll say no. It was this was like it, dude. This was still from what I know, like what, one of the biggest like legitimate business, one of the most legitimate exclusive streaming deals still so far. And it yeah, it wasn't like it wasn't like chopped up into like equity or anything like that. Or it was just a raw deal. Raw, good old, got to hit a hundred hours a week. Yup. Dude, I also streamed 300 hours a week though. I'm sorry, not hours a week, 300 hours a month. I was, dude, really? this isn't, this is another, yeah, this I is another thing I was saying. Number. I know you did, but like, I'm going to go, I'm going to dive a little bit further into this. Like yeah. there were some people that said it was a money grab, a cash grab. Like I wanted this streamed platform and this deal to make so much sense and to work like more than anyone, probably more than Mixer did. I have a huge, it's not, it's not an imposter syndrome. But it's like if somebody pays me a certain amount of money, I want them to get what they're. I want. I like. I'm not this person that's like get the bag and get out. I wanted it to freaking work, and the proof is in the pudding. Like the proof is literally there. My requirement was 100 hours a month. I streamed 300 hours a month for like a year straight, which is how long I was there. It was for a year before it shut down. I was go. I was streaming my ass off. Like it was not for lack of want. I wanted. Like I did not want the reason that it failed to be that I just didn't, you know what I mean? I did my minimum and I left or I stopped. Like I was live all the time playing Fortnite, grinding the shit out of it. Like Ian, this is when Fortnite sucked too. Like, so I really was just like putting in the hours and it still failed. So yeah, I mean, I think working for you, I can see it on the back end. I think people on the front end, like who are just a viewer can't really see it. But any anytime like we have a sponsored stream or like anything sponsored or like even with the podcast, like, oh, how did this do? 
your first question is always like, what did the brand say? Yeah. Are they happy? Like that is literally the first text as soon as you get off stream. Yeah. Same thing um, with Kel- dude, yeah, even my my boy Kelby, Kelby May, who was like my first, like he was my guy. I guess you would say he was like my Andre, but uh, like not an assistant. I don't know. Like I would always like he was my guy who like got me all my brands and stuff like that back in the day when I was with Loaded, and it was the same way. Like I was always just like, what do they think? Like tell me what's going on. What are they thinking? Are they happy? Do they want more? Like. I know that it's on the contract, but if they want, like I'll tweet out a couple more things. Like I always just wanted the brands to be happy because I just always wanted people to have the best experience if they were working with me. So, and I still am like that to this day. I mean, Kelby was more, I don't know him, but he was, sounds like more of an agent on that. Yeah. He he was my agent for sure. But he, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get it. Love you, Kelby. We're going AFK with Ninja. What's he going to say? My mods had like monthly or like bi-weekly meetings with Mixer to tell them all the things that they could have done to improve the platform. Not a single one of those things was changed or ever acted upon. That's number one. Number two, I had no idea this was happening. I think I found out like three days before they announced it. Right. So I wasn't sitting here with like weeks of preparation or even days of preparation, like leading up to to like the fall of it. It was kind of like I got a call from and for, for my boy, and he was like, "Yeah, Tyler, this is like big news. I got to tell you something." I was like, "All right, can you tell me now?" He's like, "I have to wait. I have to tell you in a couple of days." I was like, "Oh, did he uh, call you?" Yeah, I was like, "Okay, <laughs> uh, thanks, dude." Like my uh, my heart's like in my you know in my stomach, and I'm like freaking out. And then we find out like the day before they announced it and told everyone, it's like this mixer's gone, dude. Are and you you're being painful. <laughs> I have no idea, bro. I blacked out that entire year, to be completely honest. <laughs> I think was like it wasn't COVID, but in general, like I was just in my I was in my feelings that year uh, of Mixer. I really I was just in stream. I was in grind mode, right? I made that deal. I wanted it to work, so I just was like I was just in my basement in Illinois streaming every day. I think that's when we started. When you went back to Twitch, yeah, was it like late 2019? I think <laughs> that's all a blur, bro. I just remember being in my bedroom. That's all I remember. Yep. Dark times. It's all it's all a blur, bro. The darkest <laughs> literally. of the, literally the darkest of times, bro. There's that meme. There's a meme on the internet of like twenty of like tw- like twenty two thousand the year two thousand till two thousand eighteen or two thousand seventeen, and it's just like wouldn't it be nice? I don't know. It's just some like crazy like happy go lucky meme, and then and it's Ryan Gosling, just like you know happy and playing all of his little you know sexy roles where he's smiling and having a great time. And then it goes, and then it cl- switches over to 2018 through 2023, and it's Ryan Gosling in uh, um, Blade Runner, and it, to where it's Ryan Go- oh, to where it switches over to the you know Ryan Gosling in Blade Runner meme, where he's just like sad, depressed. There's me- there's you know it's freaking it's raining all the time, uh, and memory reboot, memory reboots playing, <laughs> and it's just like this has been the last five years, dude. It's just freaking, it's just changed, man. How did you strategize afterwards as we wrap up here? After that downfall, you know, Twitter was going crazy. You know, you got paid out, but it's also like, what do I do next? Yeah, it wasn't, again, it wasn't, the goal wasn't to just make the nut and leave. It was, or like the bag. Ever, right, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> get, get your bag, get your bag, dude. Like, it was, again, we really genuinely wanted it to succeed. So when it didn't, we were like, dude, holy shit. I mean, my first question was, I was like, Oh my god, is this my fault? <laughs> and they were like, no, 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 no. They just, you know, they just said no, no more, no mas, no mas mixer. So our goal was again just to I was like, okay, we're still, you know, we're still massive, we're still relevant, we're still, you know, one of the biggest streamers in the world, if not the biggest tr- gamer in the world. Let's let's strike another deal. Let's figure it out. Where are we going to live? It's like our really our only two options really were and th- I've talked about this before. This was where the birth of multi-streaming, the idea of multi-streaming, the, like the baby child, the brain child of Jess and I came in. We talked about, we had three options, YouTube, and this is in no particular order, YouTube, Twitch, or multicast and stream everywhere and don't take a deal. Of course, 
we were we wanted to like again i wanted to go back to twitch dude like there's so much dark drama about this shit man i loved twitch so much dude and i felt like i got literally cuck sucked and fucked like in every every way i just always felt like i was just you know not appreciated and so it was it was it was tough like i always just felt like they were kind of like spitting in my face with like the offers and things like that but we ended up coming to like a nice agreement where we're like okay it's either this deal with twitch or multicasting like youtube was off the table youtube has never had never really i think once i went through my dark phase on youtube where i just started re-uploading like old Fortnite videos for like six months straight and then uploading apex and league of legends and just basically killing my channel essentially they were just like yeah dude this guy will never take youtube seriously and at the end of the day i don't fucking take youtube seriously i'll admit that i'll say it out loud bro i don't care you do care you just don't play the game I do care. I just don't care enough to play the game, right? I'm not going to sit there and do and read, read in fake intros for like, you know, 20 minutes and, and clickbait people. Like, that's because that's what it's about, bro. I don't have to clickbait on my Twitch channel, dude. I just fucking play games and I shit on everyone and, I, and I, I'm entertaining, right? Like, but when, when you just to play the game of YouTube, bro, you just have to come up with the most clickbaity titles and thumbnails and you just have to bait people in. And I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Like I've had, I've had hundreds of conversations with Mr. Beast and Jimmy and Courage, and they're like, "This is what you have to do, Tyler." And I'm just like, "No, dude, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna freaking play dress up and do a Fortnite fucking fashion show for views. Like, I'm not." <laughs> so, even though that uh, that video I is pretty funny, the one that Courage I... filmed. Oh yeah, man. I mean, bro, he's just got it down. Like uh, again, yeah. I again, I love gaming, dude. I love playing the game. I don't like content like that i mean i don't know structured content for me has always just felt like i don't know planned fake in a way it, dude it, it's a give and take i i, I don't I, like because like when i plan to do some among us streams like and that's planned content it's fun as shit right like i i i, I like the off the off the cusp just kind of game and and chit, chit chat and it's literally it's just comfortable it's safe it's what i've always known it's what i go back to it's what i did like forever and and since i you know i've ever started streaming yeah, it's like you know you're not planning day by like how the interaction is going. You're you're just planning the day to play with your buddies. Literally, and it's like, fun. what's the yeah? What's the day? I'm gonna log on and I'm gonna play. Like that's it. Like that's my plan. And whatever happens, happens. So, you know, it was a lot easier during the beginning of Fortnite when everyone was on and we were like, oh, dude, we can do whatever we want. Like let's just play. You know, I know I already knew I was gonna play with everybody. It was gonna be lit. But back in the day, it was just like ten years ago. It was just me logging on, playing MLG playlist and Halo Reach, like and doing one v ones. Like that's all I knew what, what was going to happen. And, uh, and I loved it. I loved it. It was just me streaming, talking to my viewers. It was always about the viewers. So. I just want to say that I love you and I've been a huge fan of you for years and I am still obsessed with your Fortnite videos. I love you so much. You're literally like, you're so amazing. From Flowey, what are finances like as a streamer? As in apart from super chats and perhaps partnerships, what is it like? Also, how do you keep having fun with video games? What are finances like? Does that mean like what are like like how how do you make money? Yeah, uh, apart um, from like the usual like streaming like stuff sure. and donations. I get asked this question a lot. This is usually a question for for parents and and people that are like trying like they're you know they're curious about whether or not they want to let their kids do this and if it's a viable way of income. So there's so many different ways to make money. Unfortunately, all of it involves having an audience. So there's ad revenue when you're playing ads. There's subscriptions where people can subscribe to your stream because they want to support you. And then there's donations. And most now, most platforms have an in... What's the word I'm looking for? Like an on-site way to donate. So it's not PayPal. It's not credit card, like directly to a PayPal or anything like that. It's literally like... Oh, safer. 
Yeah, it's a lot safer, no chargebacks, so it's very safe. So, and in my opinion, and by the way, I I 100% recommend that everyone do this, especially if you're a small streamer. Like, do not have your PayPal out there. In my opinion, like, don't have people donate through Streamlabs and things like that. It's you can, but it's you know, if you if you're again, if you're established, do it because there's talk text to speech and it's funny and shit. It can be great. But if you're a small streamer, a chargeback could like literally screw you, especially if someone's donating like 50 bucks or 100 bucks and they charge back. And then now you have to, now you're $100, you have $100 less and you have to like pay the, the chargeback fee. It's, whole, it's super crazy. So to be safe, you, you eliminate all those and you just only allow people to donate through the platform, which is great. But then there's, you know, there's, there's sponsorships and there's, you know, endorsements and things like that. And, and those come with networking and going to events like TwitchCon and, um, you know, reaching out. It's just networking at the end of the day. It's a lot of work. Um, it's not easy. It's not for everybody. And it yeah, again, it takes, it just takes a lot of work. Like if you want to get paid by a company that you like and enjoy like a gaming company, like let's just take dead by daylight, for example, it's a very small community. Well, actually it's a very big community, a very passionate community. And if you wanted to get paid by them to do like a stream or something like that, like I would a start by streaming the game and creating content on YouTube and Twitch and wherever and TikTok. B, like follow the developers on Twitter and try to interact with them. And then C, like, you know, go to the parties at TwitchCon and, and go to their events and things like that and show up whenever they're doing live stuff and, you know, be like, yeah, hey, I'm a content creator, blah, 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 blah. You know, it's just, again, it's a lot of work. And unfortunately, like a normal nine to five job, the money doesn't come right away. It comes late later. So great question though. Uh, Floyd, thank you for asking and I hope you have a wonderful day. And there you have it, folks. We've reached the end of another epic AFK with Ninja episode. If you've enjoyed the journey thus far, please consider leaving a rating, review, and hitting that follow button. We have a ton of incredible guests coming your way, and I want you to be the first to know when a new episode drops. Until next time, catch you soon. It's